only. Uh, so good evening. My name is Kelly Champagne. I am an instructional specialist in secondary social studies. Um, so that means I'm actually going to share my screen. So hang tight so we can do this together. So that means uh, what my position is, is that I oversee um, curriculum in the social studies office. Specifically, I live in the land of middle school, um, but I also am in charge of uh, the financial literacy component. So uh, just some background information. So we're all on the same page and speaking the, the same language before you ask questions. Um, MSDE has uh, six standards in which students have to uh, meet by the time they leave fifth, eighth, and 12th grade. Um, in fifth grade, in, in elementary school, they're being written for an entire unit to cover financial literacy skills in third grade. Um, in middle school, they cover financial literacy through their seventh grade course, where they participate in Junior Achievement Finance Park. So it's three weeks of a curriculum and then a week of an experience, a culminating experience um, at Edison High School of Technology, where Finance Park exists. Um, and then in high school, this is where we kind of hit a little bit of a roadblock. So quick recap, um, we had a student-led uh, active group known as Innovative X that lobbied the Board of Education from February of 2020 all the way up until uh, this decision that was done in June of 2022. Um, and during that time, um, this cross-county group essentially advocated for more financial literacy. Currently, what it stands in high school, before we talk about the course that exists, is that students were exposed to financial literacy standards and skills through a course known as Edmentum that came at the end of their NSL uh, course. Uh, sorry that came at the end of their NSL course. So that's usually their sophomore year. And they probably had about a solid three weeks to do some financial literacy. Um, depending on the uh, expertise and knowledge of the teacher uh, leading that component of the course, um, students may or may not have had the best financial literacy experience. And so with that being said, um, this group advocated for the board to push to do something different. Um, and what the board came out with is that um, it's not a graduation requirement that they make, though that, that is on the table again uh, for spring of 2023 and May of 2023 actually, um, is that they said all 27 high schools must offer uh, the financial literacy as an elective. Um, you know, if there's not enough kids to fill the elective, then that's a different story, but schools must at least recognize and um, provide that as an option. And students who complete that financial literacy course uh, will receive um, a graduation recognition in the form of a cord uh, that they wear um, across the stage. So the question becomes, which I'm sure you're all aware uh, in the economic uh, environment in which we live in, um, why is financial literacy so important and why does it matter for students? And so I just wanted to kind of share some information that was not only shared uh, with the board, but the students and I, um, as I helped to lead this Innovative X group that was lobbying, for lack of better words, the Board of Education, is we started pulling some data together of what, what is actually occurring right now in the United States. And so I'll give you a minute to look at this, um, but it's everywhere from the average family can't cover uh, an emergency all the way down to parents aren't even talking to their students uh, about financial matters, or matters because we all know finance is stressful. But we also know that finance and managing your finances is a life skill. And we all know that when finances um, or money is, is not managed correctly, it causes stress um, and it causes division and it causes anger. Um, and you know, we have to arm our students with the skills necessary to participate in life and make good choices related to credit, debt, getting in a place, buying a car, uh, paying for school, all of these decisions that they're going to have to make, you know, by the time they turn 18. Um, and so it's really important that we provide students with the, the necessary life skills 
uh, to make these sound financial decisions. And so currently in offering this financial literacy course, um, which is not in all high schools this year, we have, I believe, 14 high schools that are offering it. It's a semester long course and it ranges from, um, again, it's, um, and let me back up a little bit. There is a framework for teachers to utilize that highlights the six standards that the state of Maryland says you must teach teachers. These must be implemented if you're teaching the financial literacy course. Um, and it covers a lot of um, information that students are very passionate about and interested in. So before we even built this course, in conjunction with the standards that we know are not optional, that non-negotiable, that sit at the table, we asked students um, and we surveyed them and said, what else do you want to see? What do you want to make sure is covered in this course? And we had everything from paying taxes in a gig economy um, to uh, spending habits of um, or social media influencing spending habits. We have a great lesson on that um, to debit and credit and credit scores and what that means to build good credit, what that means to build wealth, what that means to invest. Um, how to honor your cell phone contracts and bills, how to understand paying your credit card. Again, solid life skills that students are going to need to navigate, quote unquote, the real world uh, as they enter it when they move into college and beyond. And for some of our students who are already existing in that, right? They need that uh, foundation to help them make those good choices. So what's informing this curriculum that the teachers are utilizing with students? Again, um, a lot of times the teachers are not experts in the field, uh, so they do a lot of learning on their own, which is fantastic. But we also have, um, as this wave of financial literacy kind of takes hold across the nation of students need these skills, students need these skills, we have a lot of um, opportunities and resources that are free um, that have just done a phenomenal job. And I've linked them in here for you. Um, that you can take a look at at your leisure. But one of the biggest ones that we use to inform the curriculum, which aligns with Maryland State Department of Education standards, is the Next Gen Personal Finance um, course. So they offer semester long courses, year long courses, nine week courses, middle school courses, high school courses. And they've done a phenomenal job of gathering experts in their field, and quite frankly, young experts in the field that can create material that speaks to uh, students and utilizes the platforms and the language and the information that they're hungry for. Um, and these resources are free. And this Next Gen Personal Finance also offers on-demand training for um, teachers to get the information and resources they need. So it's really just done phenomenally well. Um, and so we, we rely heavily on that for the curriculum. In addition, the Maryland Council on Economic Education partners with us to help support that curriculum um, and provide training in the summer. And then of course, the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau, they've actually put out some really great videos. So if you yourself as a parent are interested in saying, how can I actually start the conversation with my, with my um, student? A great way to do that is go to their website. They've created some great resources, specifically videos that you could watch that might give you an entry point to have that conversation about finances with um, your student and, and, and kind of giving them a, an overview of, of things that you wish you had or been armed with when you were younger that you can impart to your student as well. And so, as I said before, a lot of times our teachers are not classically trained. You know, they didn't go to school to be a financial literacy teacher. And so we need to make sure that they have the, the, the most update resources. Uh, the most reliable and valid and factual resources. And so we've curated a framework with veteran teachers of the course long before MCPS said, hey, you have to offer this. We had teachers who saw a need, saw the gap and filled it by creating an elective. And so I brought them together this summer to help uh, curate some resources that would be go-to for teachers that were tried and true um, that helped to implement um, the information that was needed um, in a, uh, you know, sound way, uh, reliable resources, etc. Additionally, this summer, um, teachers who are teaching this course next year will have an opportunity to attend a training with me. 
um, to go over the framework, to go over the resource, and to have the Montgomery, or excuse me, the Maryland Council on Economic Education will also be at that training to provide additional resources, uh, free resources that schools can take advantage of to include uh, stock market trade and games that were specifically designed for high school students um, and other uh, field trips and professional experiences on their dime, which is uh, always appreciated and always needed. Um, so teachers aren't paying out of pocket. And quite honestly, our school system isn't paying out of pocket yet because um, we don't, that hasn't been allocated in the budget. Might look different when they vote again in May. Um, and then, as I said before, NextGen has some on-demand uh, personal finance topics and trainings that teachers can do at any time. And they also have live virtual sessions. Um, and we've actually had a couple teachers uh, certify in what's called uh, to be a NextGen uh, Finlet teacher. Uh, so we have some really passionate teachers out there about this topic. Um, and then last but not least, before I open it up to questions or comments, um, one of the things that we're working on in the social studies office is we'd love to have um, you, parents, community members. Uh, I know that there are lots of uh, parents and community members that work in the field of finance, um, but also you all are experts because you live it. And so if you would be willing to share that expertise with students, whether we record you uh, in a video that is implemented into the curriculum where teachers can access it on demand to hear from an expert or somebody in the field, or again, you who's experienced making choices about uh, budgeting or debt or credit or college or whatever the case may be, we'd love uh, for you to be a part of that. If you have a connection through your business, or your work, uh, we'd love uh, to, to either A, reach out to you for a Zoom in uh, field trip, um, or uh, for you to share your um, expertise as well. Um, and so that's my email address. You're more than welcome to email. Quite honestly, at any point, if any of the, if, if you have questions that come up, about financial literacy and you want to kind of dig a little bit deeper um, or see some materials, I'd be happy to communicate with you um, and kind of walk you through anything that uh, you needed. And so with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and you can either unmute, you can put it in the chat. Are there any questions or concerns uh, that you would like me to address uh, related to financial literacy? Kelly, thank you for the overview. That was helpful. Um, no, all I wanted to say is I, I'm in full support of financial literacy, and um, you know I'll contact you separately via your email to get in touch. I can share with you what I've done, my background in finance, uh, financial leadership roles, and how perhaps I can be of help. Yeah, that that would be fantastic. We're always looking for you know community partners. Again, you know, um, not knowing your background, but you just sharing that quick overview. Um, you guys hold a lot of the, the knowledge and keys that could help support uh, and make a difference for a student who uh, may or may not be having these conversations at home. Uh, and again, not trying to infringe on parental rights at all, but just wanting to make sure our students walk away um, when they graduate feeling, you know, supported and also knowledgeable. Um, because when, when I walked away to go to school, I definitely did not have some of this information. Um, and it's, you know, in the in the economic environment we live in now, uh, it's just it's silly not to it's silly not to have these conversations. So no, thank I, you. I totally agree, totally agree. And as I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself properly. Um, my son is in 10th ten, grade. Um, I I'm a CPA, and I pretty much build my career about financial leadership roles, a CFO, multiple uh, premier institutions. Uh, in recent times, I actually designed and deployed a financial literacy program just for my kids and, and their friends. And um, at one of my employers, I put in place a, um, a financial development um, curriculum that was actually pretty helpful. And I invited a number of participants as part of their development. So I've done significant where I also spent about more than 12 years with junior achievement at a time before they build their Good. facility when we used to go to the schools and yes. teach real lessons. So, yes. um, so I have some experience on that. I, I 
hope I can be of help with this. I, I, I would love to connect uh, later. Yes, I, I would love to pick your brain and I would love to talk about, you know, what what you what role you see yourself in. And and um, yeah, please, please reach out. Will do. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. Um, does anybody else uh, in the breakout room have any questions for me or any clarification or um, is everybody okay, feeling okay? Kelly, just a reaction to the topics that were in your PowerPoints. Yeah. I believe you mentioned those are some of the topics that are being taught. Um, I didn't see entrepreneurship. Perhaps that could be an area to consider. No, it um, is. It's definitely in the curriculum. That's actually one okay. of the standards. Yeah. So it's one of the standards of, uh, yeah, the Maryland state standards. And we actually, okay. I'm um, meeting with somebody from Edward Jones. Well, I have been meeting with them. Um, he's not, you know, going to represent Edward Jones, but he's, so to give you an idea of some things that people are interested in doing, he'd like to do a lecture series where him and a colleague who um, works on Wall Street, um, but is passionate, deeply passionate about entrepreneurship, um, they'd like to invite, it would be, you know, like 6 to 7.30, um, sometime in May, where students can get on the Zoom and they can share kind of their expertise and how students you know, can plan for, you know, um, stock market or investing or entrepreneurship and what that means as they enter into college and what does it look like after college and just kind of sharing their, their expertise with students. Um, and so we're going to pilot it in May to see how it goes, uh, to see if there's a good response, if, if students are receptive. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of passionate people like yourself about finance especially the people in finance, because you see it and yeah. live it every day. Uh, and there's things I'm sure you probably wish people knew. <laughs> um, and that's what um, this uh, gentleman named Robert Keller from um, Edward Jones would like to do. So, Excellent. yeah, I mean, we're, we're open to, a, to anything. I, I'm very passionate about financial literacy as well. Um, I would love to see it as a graduation component. Um, you know, you know how like we have SSL hours that at some point yeah. from ninth through 12th grade students have to, you know, take uh, a financial literacy component and providing choices for students and how it fits into their schedule. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I think the advocacy of the students that got us to this point was just beyond compare. And I'm trying to keep pushing this forward and, and getting as much as the community involved as possible. No, I would agree with that. I think the cost of not doing that is is extremely high and mm -hmm. painful and punitive for the community at large. So agreed, agreed. We either pay now or we pay later. Exactly, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I just uh, yeah, I have a rising. My daughter will be ninth grade next year, so I've already told her like take the financial literacy course, <laughs> do it. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, please, mom, stop. <laughs> Kelly, and I forgot to take to write down your email unless you tell me that it, it's in the emails. Don't yeah, I, I, I can put fine. it in the chat. Um, okay. I'm Thank gonna you. put it in the chat right now. Is this, um, can I ask you a question? Please. Um, is this more for like um, kids in the lower grades or the higher like junior seniors? Yeah, no, great question. We do have it currently open to ninth through 12th graders. Um, and, and, and talking with some of the schools that are implementing it this year, uh, they said it varies, you know, sometimes the, uh, ninth and 10th graders don't see the connection or value yet for them. Uh, um, I know that there's conversations about college. I know there's conversations about paying, renting, buying a house, or excuse me, uh, buying a car, renting an apartment, you know, things that are impending for a junior and senior, um, aren't so much, you know, ninth and 10th graders aren't still plugging into that bigger picture, right? That they're right. hitting that. Um, so it varies school to school, um, but schools must offer to ninth through 12th graders. And so they have um, all of their four years to decide if they want to opt in to take that course at any point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. Good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, we cover topics like um, debit, credit, what's good credit, 
um, the influence, social media influencing what you buy. Um, you know, there's a great lesson from one of the resources about how social media puts uh, kids in debt because it, you know, it's basically like the modern day version of keeping up with the Joneses, right? Yeah. You're like, you have to have everything that you see on TikTok <laughs> to be that TikTok star. And that's not reality. Um, and they talk about paying for college and entering into contracts with a credit card or a cell phone um, mm -hmm. or entering into agreements with a bank, you know, opening up a banking account. Just again, all sound financial decisions and skills that regardless of what your academic standing is, what your language is, um, you have to be able to uh, navigate these choices, um, which, you know, help your, you know, um, stability as an adult. Right, right. Yeah, I think those are really important and like they don't get to learn that from other resources. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the parents teaches them, but yeah. However, I feel like, oh, I have an older um, kid. She's graduating, but we thought about taking this course, but she just ran out of like time periods because she had to do with all these other things. Yeah, and no, we- um didn't make it. We had a- um. Actually, one of the things that this uh, Innovative X, this cross county um, group talked about was, um, you know, a lot of the students that were on this uh, breakout, this this advocacy group were very um, driven students, um, students that were in AP and IB courses and were, you know, pushing for um, some, you know, Ivy League colleges, and they talked about, though they saw the value in financial literacy and they were advocating for it, they weren't sure if they were going to take the course because they weren't sure how it was going to look on their transcript. Could they fit it in with everything else? Um, and that's an honest, you know, conversation they were having with me. Um, and I'm sure that you had with your daughter is, you know, weighing, you know, what's, what's going to look better, push you, you know, meet the you know, path forward that you need. Uh, and the thing that I just said to the students that I'll say to you, which, you know, your daughter, you know, the choices were not as prevalent for her. So if you have some younger students, mm -hmm. uh, it will be, but you know, this is a life skill that won't go away. So, um, yeah. you yeah. don't know how to do it. It's, it will make life hard. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. about it for my younger son. Yes. Um, he's going to ninth grade. After yeah. And, and again, they have options. So he doesn't have to do it in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only a semester long course. So um, any chance that this will be offered in like the summer school? That's a great question. We haven't brought that to the table yet as a summer school option. I think we're waiting to see what it looks like uh, in May, what the board decides. Um, if the board decides that it will not move it to a graduation requirement, um, I'm not sure that they'll push it for a summer school option. Oh, uh, but if the board does, then they will um, provide that choice for sure for students. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I got to talk to you. And sorry, I didn't turn my camera on. It's, uh, no, you're totally, it hey, you're totally fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all well-versed in Zoom at this point. Uh, 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 a, a blank screen does not mean not interested. It's just, you got stuff going on. I get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of the year for your students. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye.